Hi there. Today I've taken the opportunity to set up my laptop to test an idea that I had ages ago. Uh, I'll leave that running in the background while I do other things on my main computer. With the recent changes and updates to Fairbot, I can now do something automatically that I couldn't do before, specifically dutching in the place market. Uh, so if I can pull your memory back to this video I released a while back uh, in March, it was looking at a strategy that was based on the idea that in the place market, those places aren't necessarily filled by the favourites in the market. And therefore, by definition, they must be filled by one of the less fancied horses. So by all means, have a search for the channel for this video here if you want to recap uh, on what I was doing there. Uh, but let me just quickly run through it for you. If I jump to this race at Listowel, the idea is that if you go into Dutching, you can see here in the place market, there's two places available in this race. So the idea is that they won't be filled by the two favourites. So instead, what you do is you Dutch all the other runners that aren't in the favourites. In other words, if there's uh, two places available, you don't select the two favourites. If there was three, you would leave the first three in the market alone. So the idea here is that you select the other runners and you're looking for a profit if one of those runners was placed. Now ideally, I'd be looking for a profit of in the minimum something like £15 based on a £100 stake. So you can see in this particular race, I would comfortably make that if one of those runners was to be placed. If both of them are placed, we get a nice Brucey bonus. Now that couldn't be done before uh, in automation um, because you couldn't ascertain what your profit would be if one runner was placed. But now you can because there's a condition called the market book percentage. So we can actually utilize that figure there to work out if we have a profit. So that's what I've done today. I've set up a strategy um, today that will allow us to do that. If I just pull up the strategy editor, maximize that, just let me run quickly run through it. First one just switches to this market a minute before the off. The play at the post message just lets me know that uh, the runners are at the post, although in this case it's not actually going to play any audio simply because I've just re uh, installed everything on this laptop and I haven't copied the sound files across. Uh, so it's no action, no action for this as well, which would play a going behind message. Then we've got the check to see if it's a stalls start. I introduced you to that technique the other day. And then we have the meat of the strategy. So essentially, because there's a, we're checking to see if there's a stall start, there's two possibilities. You either do a Dutch based on a stall start so in other words you place the dutch when they're going behind or if it's not a stall start you place the dutch when they've arrived at the post after the scheduled off time so there's two dutches for each condition and of course there's three separate conditions with regard to the number of places two three and four so essentially all of these are doing the same thing uh, the conditions are the same so if I just pull this one up and let you see the detail, what we're going to do is we're going to place a Dutch and we're placing it based on the back odds ascending. Now in this case, this is for number of places is equal to two. So we Dutch the third runner down to the last runner. The E1 means the runner one from the end. Okay, in other words, the last runner. If it was the second last runner, that would be E2. And the conditions, so we check the number of places, so in this case it's equal to two. And this is where we use this new condition, market book percentage, where we check the book percentage. Now I'm using 85%, which for a race with two places should give me 
a profit of approximately £15 should only one of my selections place. I haven't decided if that's my final figure on this. As I say, I've set this up today. It's going to be looking at all the races today uh, and hopefully I'll be able to make a judgment call from that. This then uses these two conditions here to check whether this nut should fire or it should be the next one. In other words, if it's a stall start, this one will fire. If it's not a stall start, its partner in crime will fire instead. And also, it's just making sure that uh, the market isn't in play yet. And that's essentially it. All these other dutches essentially do the same sort of thing. It's just the number of places change and whether it's a stall start or not change. And that's it. So although there's six rules that do dutches, only one of them will fire, uh, uh, assuming that its conditions are okay. So what I'm going to do is, um, let me just quickly run through the results that have been so far. This one wasn't a qualifier because the book percentage wasn't below 85, but you'll see three of the runners that we would have dutched actually filled the places. So that would have been a, a double Brucey bonus. Next one, we had one selection filled a place. Both selections filled the place in the next one. So those first three races would have been really successful if I didn't have that book percentage requirement in there. None of them worked with that one, the Beverly similarly. And this is what you'll find. This tends to be more successful. Well, there's one there that filled the place. This tends to be more successful when uh, it's a smallish field, uh, eight runners or less, generally speaking. The larger the field, the less likely it is to be a qualifier. So we'll skip ahead to uh, this race at uh, Le Stowell and monitor that uh, and then I'll let this thing run throughout the day and get back to you with the final results. Okay, you can see that the two outsiders have been dutched and our book percentage is 56 so that uh, easily qualifies. So we're ready to go. Now this is a two mile race, so it's going to take four or five minutes. So I'll just skip ahead to the end and see how we've got on. Jolly good. There you see one of our selections has found a place. So that's a nice tidy profit. And that's essentially how this strategy works. So I'm just going to let this uh, run on throughout the day. I'll come back towards the end to let's see what the final scores on the boards are. Okay guys, thanks very much. Speak to you later. Okay, there's uh, two more races at Kelso to come, but I'm not going to hang around waiting for them to arrive. Um, so let's uh, do a quick summary of what's happened so far. If I open up the market watch list and maximise it, you'll see there's been 34 markets so far excluding the last two and there's been three qualifying races and all of them have been successful. So we're looking at a profit of £240 based on a £100 stake uh, so that's what 80% return on investment which is fine. But uh, let's have a look at all the other races to give you an idea of why I think this might be an interesting way of going about things. Keep in mind what the strategy is based on. It's predicated on the idea that the front runners in the market don't fill all the, spa the places available in the place market. So if we scroll right up to the very first race, you'll see here that that very first race, there was three winners, in other words, there's three places all of them were taken by our selections. In other words, none of the front runners filled those places. So that was a double Brucey bonus if that had been a qualifier. Unfortunately, it wasn't. But just continuing down the trend, you'll see there that there was one successful pick, 
two successful picks out of two, two successful picks out of three, one, two, two, obviously that was a successful pick since it was a qualifying race, and there you see another two, and you can probably get an idea from this and why I think this strategy is worth looking at. There's another two out of three. One. Now keep in mind these aren't qualifying races simply because I've set the um, market book percentage at 85. So there's two selections that would have been placed. Another two. That would have been a complete failure with all the runners at the front of the market finding the places. So that's one complete failure. And one successful pick, another successful pick, and another. Now this one's a funny one. This race here didn't quite qualify. Uh, its market percentage was 86%, so it was just outside qualification. However, there were five runners in this race, and it was these three runners, Cedar Hill, Hussein, and Cracking Destiny, that were actually the picks. But one of the runners was removed from the market after the race was finished. So in actual fact, Cedar Hill was a successful pick based on the strategy. Uh, and again, that's a complete failure. So that's two complete failures we've had so far out of all the races. Uh, one successful pick, two successful picks. These ones are obviously winning races because they were qualified. And again, another successful pick. And you can probably guess now that this trend continues quite nicely. So I'll just carry on double clicking on each of these races in turn. And you'll see in virtually all of them, there's at least one of our selections is in the places. There's one where all three are in the places. And then finally the last two races are still to go so there's nothing there. So you can see out of uh, those 34 races only two of them were complete failures. <clears throat> and neither of those two were actually qualifying races. So there's a number of things that can be done. Let me just uh, get rid of the market watch list since I'm finished with that. If I pull up the strategy editor, obviously all of the duchies have been set with the back book percentage set to less than 85%. Obviously the nearer 100 you go, the more you need more than one runner to find a place in order for you to achieve a profit. There's other ways you can handle that. For example, one might argue where there's more places available, they tend to be bigger fields, and therefore you have a greater chance of more than one of your runners finding the frame. Based on that, you can then adjust the percentage book to take that into account. So for example, if there's only two places left, leave the percentage book at 85%. If there's three places, leave the percentage book at 185%, which means you need two selections to place in order to achieve a profit. And similarly, for four places, change it to 285, which means you'll need three selections to place in order to profit. And making those changes means that you would actually have more qualifying races. It would need testing, of course. But what I've seen today uh, I'm just going to leave these settings as they are and I'll carry on testing another couple of days. I think it's worthwhile, albeit it means that qualifying races are going to be for you and far between. And certainly from what I've seen doing this manually, that's the case. This tends to be more successful in smaller field races. So up to eight at the maximum, uh, it tends to be more successful. Occasionally you'll get a large field that qualifies, but generally speaking, uh, they don't meet the criteria. So anyway, uh, there's the settings. You can copy those if you like. 
And in the meantime, we'll have a look at uh, doing this again over the next few days and I'll get back to you with the results. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Cheers.